If you want to take your own car for the driving test, make sure you watch this video first. I'm Omid, a driving instructor in Brisbane. So when you go for your driving test, the examiners are going to check your car first. This is just a visual check of the car to assess its suitability for testing purposes. It's not an assessment of vehicle roadworthiness. The good news is that a lot of cars pass this check. But let's see what examiners specifically look at and how they decide whether or not a car is suitable for a test. As we go through the examiner's checklist, you'll notice that many of the items on their checklist are obvious ones. First things first, your car must meet the requirements for the license class that you are applying for. So if you are going for a car license, don't take a truck to the test. Your car must be roadworthy with no known defects such as faulty Takata airbags. In February 2018, ACCC announced an Australia-wide compulsory safety recall for some Takata branded airbag due to extreme safety risk. More than 3 million vehicles are affected and if your car is one of them, you cannot take it for the test and you need to get its airbag replaced immediately for free. You can go to this website and check if your car is affected by the Takata airbag recall. I'll put a link to this in the video description below. Your car must not be a personally imported car with airbags fitted. Your car must be currently registered. The transport departments in every state of Australia have a link on their websites which allows you to check your car registration status. If you are in Queensland, you can just type Queensland Radio Check on Google and click on the first search result and follow the prompts to check your radio status. You can find the relevant links for all the states in the description of this video. Number plates must be attached to both front and the rear of the car and clearly legible from a distance of 20 meters. If your number plates are not legible or partly legible, the test will be terminated. Vehicles displaying trade plates cannot be used as a test vehicle. You must have correctly displayed the required label on your vehicle if it is hybrid, electric, or hydrogen fuel cell powered, or runs on liquid petroleum gas, LPG. For example, for a Toyota Corolla hybrid car, this EV label, which stands for electric vehicle, must be attached to its number plate, like this. You must have obtained the registered operator's permission for the vehicle to be used in the test. This is not a written permission. You can just take someone's permission verbally, but when you go for the test, you need to circle yes for this question. That's in Queensland. The format of this paper changes from time to time, but at the time of the recording of this video, it looks like this. All four tires of your car should be of the same type of tire construction, not the same brand exactly. So that's either radial ply or cross ply. We don't want to go through these details too much. This is something that your mechanic can check. Also, spare tires cannot be used for the driving test as they are designed for emergency use only. The tires must have a tread depth of at least 1.5 mm. Tire experts recommend this to be at least 3 mm. In order to check your tire tread depth, simply grab an Australian 20 cents coin with a platypus on it and place it in one of the grooves of your tire. If the platypus bill is obscured, your tire tread depth is more than 3 mm, so you're good. Just remember that tires should be rotated every 10,000 Ks and change every three to five years or as advised by visiting your local tire expert. Tires should be appropriately inflated and not punctured. Tires must not be damaged in any way that may compromise safety. Your left and right indicators or signals must be working. Your wipers and washers must be working. Your hazard light, headlight and high beam must be working. Your brake lights at the rear of the car must be working and visible from 30 meters distance from the back of the car. A centrally mounted park brake must be in proper working order when fitted in a test vehicle. We got in touch with Queensland Transport to clarify on this and they responded that a working handbrake, a foot parking brake or an automatic brake hold is acceptable. Windscreens must have a suitable level of visibility. The examiner decides whether a windscreen damage or mark on it compromises safety. If your windscreen is affected by dirt or grease, the examiners might give you some time to clean it before they start the test. The car windows must be able to be opened and closed, and also they must have a safe level of visibility. Window tinting is okay, as long as the visibility is not compromised in any way that may affect road safety. 
Doors must be able to be opened and closed from inside and outside and must be fitted with door handles. For situations where the test vehicle is fitted with driver assist devices, for example, GPS, speed alarm, park assist, easy start, the driver of the vehicle must ensure, where possible or requested, that these devices are switched off for the duration of the test. The car must have proper secure seats. The car must be fitted with seat belts that are in good working conditions. Your car must have rear view mirror and side mirrors. Your car is required to have an internal sun visor. If your car doesn't have one, that's okay, as long as it doesn't compromise your ability to drive safely. In such cases, you can use glare-resistant sunglasses to overcome any safety risk. Your car must have an anti-slip surface or rubber pad for both the brake and also clutch in manual cars. Test vehicles must be fitted with a functional speedometer your car must have a functional steering wheel, one of the obvious ones. Your car must be fitted with a warning device that is a horn, which can be operated quickly and effectively with only one hand. If your car has a warning dashboard light that doesn't go off shortly after the engine is started, the test will not proceed. Warning lights are often red and sometimes flash. They warn that there is a possible safety issue or potential vehicle damage. Inside of the car must be reasonably clean. For example, no rotting food, no animal excrement, no excessive dirt or grease on seats or seat belts, and free of potentially hazardous loose materials, for example, food, containers, paint tins, papers, and etc. So just make sure that your car is clean. You don't have to go this extreme and take your car to car wash, but if you do, that's great. Well, who doesn't like a shiny, clean car? In convertible cars, the roof must be closed and properly secured. If your car has been modified without approval, your test will not proceed. Just two things to mention for your peace of mind. Dents on the body of the car are okay. Also, some minor faults may be able to be rectified within a short period of time. So if it takes a very short time to rectify the problem and the examiners have enough time before the next appointment, they might let you to attend to the issue and proceed with the test. And if not enough time, the test will be cancelled. For example, changing brake or indicator light globe, changing a tire, adjusting the sound of a horn, or cleaning a dirty windscreen. Okay, good luck with your test and see you in the next video.